So we are now about 25 games into the season and usually by this time you have a good idea of who's going to an MVP. But this year is a little different as there's probably 10 different players that you could argue the case for. And there is no kind of favourite as of right now which is also very very weird. But I have managed to narrow it down to 6 players in which I think one of them will definitely win MVP. And in no particular order they are LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Yenis Antetokounmpo, Kawhi Leonard and Joel Embiid. Now the player that you may think that I'm missing out is Nikola Jokic but there is good reason for this. And first of all Jokic is my favourite centre in the league and I do believe the best centre in the league but I don't think he has a real shot at MVP. Because when you look at the Nuggets previous seasons they finished third last season and second season before and then ninth before that but that was when Jokic was just 22 and he wasn't really a star. And when you look specifically at the 2018-19 season they finished second only behind the Warriors super team. Jokic single handedly led them to that number 2 seed, he was first team all NBA but still only finished 4th in MVP voting. And while statistically this is by far his best season yet, the Nuggets are currently in 7th seed and I think the only way that Jokic could win MVP is if he gets the Nuggets to a top 2 seed once again. And even if he does do this, I still wouldn't have him as my favourite. So I've given you my top 6 candidates and I'd quite like to go in depth in all 6 of them. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, I'm going to dedicate a video to each of them and kind of make them like episodes and this is going to be episode 1 with Yanis Antetokounmpo. And to me it only feels right to start with Giannis as he has won the past two MVPs and was Defensive Player of the Year as well last year. And see, the thing with Giannis is I believe his biggest obstacle to winning MVP doesn't actually have anything to do with him and it's just because he has won the past two MVPs and him winning a third in a row would be really quite strange. Because only three players in history have done that and they are Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain and Larry Bird. And they are all top 10 players all time and even though I do believe Giannis could reach the top 10 level, it wouldn't seem right for him to be the youngest player to ever win three MVPs in a row. And this is known as voter fatigue as the voters have now become so accustomed to Giannis just dominating the regular season that it isn't seen as as big of an accomplishment as it actually is. Taking a look at his stats now though, you can see his numbers are virtually the same for the past two seasons and he doesn't look to have improved much. But with Giannis, you can't just look at the stats and you need to actually watch him play. Because one area that he's certainly improving is his 3 point shooting. And while he's definitely still a below average shooter, he's showing improvement each season and he's gradually shooting more and more threes. His defence is another area that's improved greatly too and the deep boy he won last year was no fluke. He's a great rim protector, great perimeter defender and other than shorter point guards I'd say he can guard every position in the league. Now just imagine how dominant Yanis would be if he had even an average 3 point shot of around 37%. He'd be the best player in the league and in terms of weaknesses in his game there'd be virtually none. He's the best transition player in the league and I would say one of the toughest players to actually guard. Even though he doesn't have a great jump shot like I just mentioned, it's not as simple as you can just sag off him and make him take that shot. Because number one, he would likely make mid-range shots if they were wide open, and number two, you'd just be giving him more room to work with. And once Yanis uses his long strides to get into the lane, it's already over. No one else in the league can cover ground in such a short space of time quite like Yanis. and in the modern NBA where so many players seem to be super athletic, Yanis might be the most athletic. He's near 7 feet tall with an incredible 40 inch vertical and a 7 foot 3 wingspan. And yeah, this is how he looks, he isn't called the Greek freak for no reason. And while I'm talking about how athletic he is, I need to show you what he looked like during his rookie season. Because the progress he's made since his rookie season is just insane. But now back to the MVP discussion. If Giannis is going to win it again, he'll need to lead the Bucks to the number 1 seed again at least. And if he does do this, it'll be more impressive than the past two years as the Celtics have been improving a lot recently, the Sixers have had a great start to the season, and Embiid is playing like an MVP. And the Nets obviously have KD, Harden and Kyrie and are their main competitor right now. But the Bucks also had the best record in the entire NBA these past two seasons, so they'll probably need to do that too. And as a whole, I feel like Giannis has really been slept on for this year's MVP as at the start of the season I heard a lot of NBA analysts say Luka which has turned out to be quite a bad prediction. And then Lebron was probably the second most popular choice which is fair enough. Now of course I do believe that Giannis could win MVP but I wouldn't have him as my favourite right now. If I had to predict where he would finish in MVP voting I'd put him right at the third seed. But if he leads the Bucks to the number one seed in the East and to the best record in the NBA again then he could be well on his way to his third straight MVP. 
And yeah, like I said, Giannis would then be the youngest player ever to win three straight MVPs, which is an incredible achievement. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, it really, really does help my channel, and I'm really, really grateful. As always, any video suggestions are greatly appreciated, and I'll make sure to get back to you in the comments. And then as always, I hope to see you on my next video.